Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley, and today I put together my absolute favorite must-try spring DIYs. I think you're really gonna love the colors and the brightness of all of them. And hey, let's move past snow and think spring. First, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the little notification bell so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Also, in the drop-down menu, you click all so you're notified about all notifications. Coming into the new year, I have so many ideas for room makeovers, room refreshers, DIYs, decorate with me's, home decor ideas, nursery makeover, a big craft room overhaul, and so much more. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss a thing. All right, let's get started with these spring DIYs simple DIY and probably my favorite one out of all five. I started off with this chalkboard from the Dollar Tree. Now this is the one that has a little stand on the bottom. And first I put some, I believe actually this was duct tape, although you probably wanna use painter's tape, but this did work. And I just wanted to protect the chalkboard in the middle. So I went ahead and put some tape all around the edges so I didn't get any paint on the chalkboard. Then by using my ballet slipper, I gave this one really good coat of that and I just made sure to cover the entire thing also including the bottom Next, I took this candlestick holder, also from the Dollar Tree, and I gave this two coats of my ballet slipper from Waverly. I put both of those aside and let them dry. Then I took this crayon out of the little packs of crayons, and if you caught my tiered tray video, you saw that I used these to put on jars. But I just took one of the crayons, and to make it easier to paint, I stuck it on a skewer, and then painted my little bunny with the ballet slipper as well. Once everything was all dry, it was time to put it all together. So I took my chalkboard and peeled all the tape off to reveal the chalkboard again. And then by using some hot glue, I am going to hot glue this on top of the candlestick. Now, I kind of thought that I would add extra support to the candlestick to help it. I don't know if this was actually uh, necessary because I realized it probably would be the same thing if I just glued the, the chalkboard right on top of the candlestick, but at least it helps me sleep at night, I guess. <laughs> so I just cut off a little bit of a craft stick, hot glued it on top of the candlestick, and then I also painted that with the ballet slipper too. I made sure to also paint the underneath part uh, because you probably, you might be able to see that. Then once that was dry, I took this super glue adhesive from the Dollar Tree, mixed it with some hot glue for that permanent hold and instant hold, and then put my chalkboard right on top. Then I took that super glue and hot glue and glued my bunny to the top of my little chalkboard. I apologize, I went out of frame here. I've been trying different angles. I got a new tripod, so let me know if you like this angle. It's just more kind of on top of my projects rather than to the side, but let me know in the comments what you think. After everything was all glued together, I took some ivory chalk paint and my favorite distressing brush, and I just lightly brushed over the all of the pink parts of my chalkboard. Of course, I did not do inside of the chalkboard, but I went around the frame, on the bunny, and of course the candlestick. I loved how this came out. I thought it was so cute. Now I have not written on it yet, and I am so excited to put Happy Easter or Hello Spring or something very cheerful. That way it just welcomes spring and Easter into our home and welcomes people into our home as well. I just thought this was festive. And again, if you've been following me, you know I am loving the pastel colors for this spring and Easter 
so this fit right into all of my home decor. So I am ready to display this next to all of my other pastel pieces. What do you think? For my second DIYs were easy, this one is super easy. The only thing you're gonna need are three balloons and you're going to blow them up into the shape of an egg. So you can kind of see that I blew it, blew it up and then I kind of used my hands to form the shape that I wanted. I did do two kind of bigger ones and then one smaller one. And then once they were all blown up, I took my Mod Podge and I brushed my Mod Podge over the balloons and I put a lot of Mod Podge on the balloons. I wanted to make sure that it was a very strong hold. So I brushed it all over the balloons and then by taking the brand new twine from the Dollar Tree, I just wrapped the twine around the balloons. Now I had three different colors so I did three different twine eggs. So first I just glued it down. And then I just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and I went in all different directions and just layered it and you know just had fun and I just wrapped it all around and then once I got to where I kind of felt like it was wrapped enough I just cut it off and glued down the end and then I put a really nice thick coat of Mod Podge on top of the twine so I did this for all three of my eggs and the end result is so neat now this is not my creation I've seen a lot of uh, creators do this and I just thought this was an easy idea to give because it is so simple to do and it really does not take that long to do the only thing I would recommend is doing it at night or during the day and then letting it sit overnight uh, I, that's exactly what I did I made these in the evening and then I woke up the next morning morning after they were completely dry and I went ahead and moved on to the next step but basically this is it and you guys they came out so cute Okay, so as you saw, this is now the next day. So I just took a skewer, you could take a pin or a needle, whatever you have, and you wanna pop your balloon. Now I did notice that because we used Mod Podge, it was glued to some of the strings. So you might just have to kind of poke it through a couple different parts of the string. That way to disconnect the balloon from the string. But you just wanna kind of go carefully um, and just go within. You can use your scissors to do this. Basically, however, you have to get the balloon out. And then you just carefully pull the balloon out whatever hole you can find and then you might have to just take your hands and kind of shape it again because some of the string might have kind of come unraveled. Now here I'm just taking the other end of my skewer and kind of poking through some of the Mod Podge that you could still see but look how cute those are. I loved those. What do you think? For this first DIY, I'm using this welcome summer sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now this sign is new this year, so if you see them, pick a bunch of them up because these are perfect to make big signs with. But for today, we're just going to use one of these. The first thing I did was take off this 3D foam welcome, and it was pretty easy to get off. I just started with my scraper and then it peeled right off. Next, I took off the twine hanger and the tag. 
Then I took my sanding block and sanded the back of the board down. That way it was nice and smooth for me to paint. Make sure to wipe it down when you're done sanding. The next thing I did was take my Waverly chalk paint in white and a chipping brush and I went ahead and messily, I don't think that's a word, but I gave this a very messy paint job. So as you can see, I wasn't really going for full coverage here because I wanted to give this sign a chipped wood look. After my paint was dry, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and my favorite distressing brush from the Dollar Tree and I dipped it in the lid, I dabbed it off on a plate and then I dry brushed over my board with the wax. Now again, I was not going for full coverage, I was just brushing, paying attention to the edges and the corners and then also hitting the middle. Then I took the white chipping brush again and kind of brushed over the brown to tone it down. I kept going back and forth between the wax and the white chalk paint to create the look that I wanted. Next I took this board that was the same length of the board that I'm working on and I'm going to create the shiplap look. So I put the board down and then I took a small paintbrush, dipped it into the Waverly Antique Wax and then I just painted lines going down again to create the shiplap look. Then to blend everything in, I took my sanding block and I sanded it all down. After wiping it off, I took that little paintbrush again and I painted nail holes at the tops of every slat. So I put two nail holes in between every slat and I did this on both ends of my board. ahead and put my board off to the side to dry and now I'm pulling these amazing chicken wire signs that I got from Dollar General for a dollar each and I'm going ahead and cutting off the wire hanger carefully and then I'm gonna take off the cows in the middle of these signs now I didn't have my needle nose pliers with me or like a little screwdriver to get in there so I just used my scraper to kind of get the staples up and then I used my wire cutters to pull them out now you want to carefully do this so you don't accidentally rip off the chicken wire but once I got underneath there and got the staples up they were really easy to come out Once those cows came off, look at this amazing frame that you have left. I went ahead and did this on both. Next, I took two of these plastic jars that I got from the Dollar Tree for Valentine's Day. Now, I did see some for Easter too, so they should still have these. And I opened them out of the package and then I peeled the label off. I did this for both. Next, I took some twine and I wrapped it around the top of my jar. Then I wrapped it through the middle of my chicken wire and tied it to the back. I did this for both as well. I did go ahead and double knot it to make sure that it stayed and then I just put some hot glue at the bottom wherever it was going to touch that chicken wire just to give it some extra support. Now when you do this, you do want to be careful because as you're about to see, 
on this second one, I pulled it so tight through the chicken wire to tie it that it, the chicken wire actually came out off now I did fix it but I just wanted to let you know to kind of cautiously tie it so there's where it came off all I did was hot glue it back on there and it was fine I haven't had a problem but just be careful when you are tying the twine through the chicken wire Before you tie that second one through there, you're going to want to put it next to the first one to make sure that both of your jars line up. After that, I cut off the remaining twine that was on the back and then I went ahead and took my hot glue and kind of put, put some on the back to give it some more extra support. I did this on both as well. After my glue was dried, I took that whiteboard again and I lined both of these up on top. Now, I did have it more towards the bottom, so I left a little space on top. Once I positioned them where I like them, I went ahead and hot glued them down. Next, I took my twine and starting from the back, I hot glued it down and then I wrapped it around and around and around up top until I had the look I was going for. I finished it off by putting some hot glue on the back and then cutting off the remaining twine. Next I took two of these sprays of greenery and these came from the Dollar Tree and they are my absolute favorite. They look a little frosted and I think that's why I love it. And they had purples, pinks, yellows so I grabbed a ton because like I said they're my favorite. And I just went ahead and cut some little pieces off and then just arranged a little floral arrangement in each one of my jars. I tried to use all the pieces from both bushes to make it more full. So this next part, I'm going to give you a few options that you can do. So technically this is optional, but here's some ideas. What I did next was take these black chalkboard little signs that I got from the Dollar Tree and I took off the clothespin on the back. Then I went ahead and hot glued it to the front of each of those jars. Now before I did that, I decided that it needed a bow. So I just took my twine again and I cut a very simple bow and then hot glued it to the twine that was already on my jar. I did this for both. So back to my little chalkboards. I took my white paint marker and I wrote welcome on one of the signs and spring on the other.
Now, the reason why I say this is optional is because if you don't do this, then you can actually use these jars to switch out the florals per season. So you can put some sunflowers in there for fall and then maybe some pumpkin picks. You can throw some winter sprigs in there, some Christmas things, and then you can also change it up by using picks, like I said. So you could do hearts on a stick, you could do shamrocks on a stick, you could do eggs on a stick, something like that. So that's why I said that this next part is optional, but it's totally up to you. I absolutely loved how this came out. I think that I might end up taking those chalkboard tags off. That way I can switch it up. But what would you do? What do you think? For this next DIY, I grabbed four of these teacher boards from the Dollar General and they were for Valentine's Day and they were each a dollar. The first thing I did was use my scraper to unscrew the little hooks on the back and I'm laughing because I did not have a screwdriver with me again, so I just used my scraper. It took a really long time, so just get a screwdriver, it'll save you so much work. Then, by using my hair dryer, I took off the stickers on the back. Now, I thought those little holes were going to be a problem, but it actually, they kind of disappeared after I sanded them down. So I went ahead and sanded down each of the boards because it still had a little residue from the sticker. Now watch what happens, boom! <laughs> I accidentally sanded the red and then right went right on top of the white and then that brought the sticker out in red. Oops, oh well, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna paint them anyways. After I sanded them down, I went ahead and wiped them off to make sure that there was no sand residue on there. Next, I took my Waverly chalk paint in white and I painted two of my boards with that. Now, ideally, I would have loved to get all white boards, but this is all they had, so I had to just use what they had. So, I painted the two red ones in white, and then I'm going to create my own mixture to paint the other ones. But no matter what colors you get, if you do this project, you're just going to want two white and then two pale pink that you'll see in a second. I ended up doing three coats on each board. I made sure to paint every part of that board except for the very bottom. So I did the sides and the top. Next I took my pink parfait paint from Apple Barrel and I mixed in a little bit of the Waverly chalk paint in white. Now I had to create my own mixture because I didn't want it a bright pink, I wanted a pale pink. So if you have a pale pink color, then this would work. Or use whatever color you want. You can do a pale green, a pale blue, a pale yellow, whatever you love. And then I gave each of the white boards three coats of this little mixture. And again, I did the tops and all the sides. While I had my paint out, I took this package of little square blocks that I got from the Dollar Tree and painted eight of them, although I only ended up using four, so you're only gonna need four, in the Waverly chalk paint in white. Now, I figured out after doing the first one that you really only have to paint the sides of one, so where you're holding it with your thumb and your finger, you don't have to paint two of the sides. You just have to paint four squares going around, if that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. 
after my boards were dry, I went ahead and lined them up pink, white, pink, white. Then after I made sure that they were all lined up, I took this super glue that I got from the Dollar Tree that I've been seeing a lot of crafters use instead of E6000, so I decided to try it. And I did a super glue, hot glue combination, super glue for the permanent hold, hot glue for the immediate hold, and I did this on each of my boards to put them all together. Next, I went ahead and scraped off and cleaned off any of the glue that might have bled through. Now, if you know me, you know I can't just leave this pure white and pink like this, so I had to distress it. So I took that Waverly Antique Wax and a makeup sponge this time, and I dipped dabbed and then brushed my makeup sponge all over my boards to give it that antique and worn look. Then I turned the makeup sponge on the pointy side and I dipped it into the antique wax and traced down the lines of my boards to make it look like shiplap. Now as you can see, I'm also rubbing it in with my finger. After I had it all painted and distressed how I liked it, I took my sanding block to it to blend all my colors in. I love the coloring on this. I just love how that came out. I did go over some of the spots with the Waverly Antique Wax and the chalk paint to get the look that I desired. Once I was done with all of that, I took this nautical rope in white that I got from the Dollar Tree and I cut off a little piece and then I hot glued them to either sides of the board. If you haven't figured it out, we're making a tray. Now here's the one tip I would give you. Before gluing the first piece down, I would take that and measure out a second piece. I forgot to do that so I kind of had to eyeball it and one handle is a little bit bigger than the other handle. So take it from me and measure your second one out first. Now, originally when I started gluing this down, I was kind of looking at those frayed edges. I was like, uh-oh, what am I gonna do with that? But then as I kept looking at it, I kind of liked it. So I went ahead and spread, spread the little edges out and hot glued them down. I kind of feel like this made this look a little bit shabby chic and I love that look too. Now I did hold all the edges down for a little bit just to make sure that they were on. And you can use E6000 or that super glue too to permanently have it, but as you can see, it's very durable. After that was done, I flipped my boards over and I hot glued one of my blocks in each corner. Now of course you could do this before you do the handles. They Mine just weren't dry yet, so I opted to do it after and it turned out fine. But I just put a ton of hot glue on one block and put one block in each corner and this completed this tray. I did take my Waverly Antique Wax and I touched up some of the edges and also rubbed it on the blocks because I wanted it all to blend in. After all my touch-ups were done, I was left with this shabby chic slash rustic slash springy tray and I absolutely love how this came out. This actually could be great for Valentine's Day too, once you think about it, but how cute is this? And it was so easy to make as well. I can't wait to style it in my spring decor. What do you think?
Now for my next DIY, it didn't come out exactly how I wanted, but I still think it came out cute. And this was inspired by something that I saw on Pinterest, which I believe originally came from the Wayfair website. So I started off with this amazing mason jar sign that of course I got from Dollar General and I took some Waverly chalk paint in white and gave it a few coats of that on the top. Now I was careful not to get any paint on the metal on top. Then after my white paint was dry, I went ahead and took that Waverly antique wax and I brushed that over my white paint. Now I obviously was not going for full coverage here, but I wanted the majority of it to be covered. Then I went ahead and made sure that it was dry. Next, I took some of this petroleum jelly and I spread it all over my mason jar. I made sure to get every corner and make and also made sure that this was completely covered as well. Then I took that Waverly chalk paint in white again and I brushed it over the petroleum jelly. Then by using my hair dryer, I dried my mason jar and then it was time for the magic. I took this little scraper and I scraped it down and I did wipe off the petroleum jelly and paint after every scrape, but look at this. It created this chipped wood look and I am obsessed with this look. It is so rustic and so neat, and how easy was that to do? Then I kind of decided that it took a little bit too much of the white off, so I just brushed a little bit back on there, and it was perfect. I loved it. And that credit goes to Windy City Crafts. That's where I got that idea, so thank you <laughs> for that. Next, by using black acrylic paint and a really small brush, I just went around the perimeter of my mason jar. I started from the top, went down and around, and back up to the other end of the top. Then I went around the edges of the mason jar as well. Next, I took the sheet of rub-on transfers that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I started cutting out these little leafy decals. And I kind of was just playing with this. I wanted to build up a very pretty leafy <laughs> display, I guess, on one side of my mason jar. But first, before I put anything down, I decided that the black around was just a little too bold, so I hit it with my sanding block. Then I went ahead and went back to those rub-on transfers and I just, like I said, played with it until I got the look I was going for. After I pretty much knew how I was going to lay them all out, I went ahead and peeled off the back of my decals and then I cut more out to kind of build it up. Then by using a craft stick, I rubbed them on. Fun fact, this was a fail, it did not work. For some reason my rub on transfers did not like the paint underneath. So 
I went ahead and put some Mod Podge on my paint because I thought that maybe the rub-on transfers would adhere to those. Fun fact again, that didn't work either. So I had two fails. And I think it was because my Mod Podge was not completely dry. So if you do this, it would work, but you need to Mod Podge over all the paint on your mason jar, let it sit for like an hour, and then do the rub-on transfers. And then I think it would work out a lot better. So here's where I'm like, oh no, now what do I do? So what I ended up doing was I took my decals off and cut them down as close to the leaf part as possible. And then I just went ahead and put them back on. Now you can't really see the little transfer paper on there from far away and really not when you're up close either. So this actually ended up working out. Once I had my vines down how I liked it, I took that pink parfait apple barrel paint again and then mixed it with some white Waverly chalk paint to make that pale pink. Now I will tell you, skip this step too, because the pale pink did not show up. This project has had a lot of roadblocks in it, but in the end I think it turned out okay. <laughs> So then I took the back of a paintbrush and I just put dots all around and see how they're coming out white? That really is pale pink, you just can't tell. So then I decided just to use the regular pink parfait paint and go over it. And now I kind of made like a little rose bush here, I guess, I don't really know. I don't really know what I was going for. I just wanted a really cute spring plant or vine. After I had my plant how I liked it, I went ahead and dried it with my blow dryer and then put a nice thin coat of Mod Podge over the whole mason jar to protect my paint. Next I took this pack of chalkboard tags that I got from the Dollar Tree and this one that it came in was just a little too big so I decided just to cut it down a little bit. So I angled at the top and then cut it down and made it a little bit smaller. Next I took some twine and I wrapped the top of my mason jar but at the bottom of where the lid would be with that. Then I cut it off in the front and I tied a knot to the side of my lid.
Next I took my white paint marker and I outlined the perimeter of my tag. Then I wrote the word bloom in cursive writing, <laughs> little fancy, right in the middle. Next, I took my twine and threaded it through the hole in my tag, and I tied a knot going down. That way, it hung to the side of my mason, mason jar uh, right by the vines. Then, originally, I had tied a bow, decided I didn't like it because I wanted my little tag to be a little lower on my mason jar. So I pulled the tag down where I wanted it and I ended up hot gluing it down. That way it wouldn't move and then I can just work with the twine after. So after I untied my bow, I just took those ends and wrapped them around the back and hot glued them down. Then I did end up making a little twine bow again and hot glued it to the side where all the twine met in the front. Now even though this project gave me a lot of challenges along the way, I think it still came out pretty cool. And it's very unique and I absolutely love that chipped wood look and that technique and I think I'm going to use it a lot because it's just one of my favorite looks. But what do you think? For the first DIY, I'm starting off with two of these packs of painter sticks. Now these come in three packs, so this will make six altogether. And I buy these packs from Lowe's, but I know that Walmart and I probably Home Depot have them too. So the first thing I did was go ahead and cut off the plastic on the sticks, and then I arranged them like a picket fence. So at first I did the straight, just one straight line and then I decided to stagger it just a little bit. So I did one shorter, one higher, one shorter, one higher, just like that. And then I flipped them all over so the ruler part was showing on the front. And then I'm gonna take these jumbo popsicle sticks and I'm going to hot glue them down to the painter sticks. That way they all are glued together. Now one craft stick was not long enough to cover all six of my painter sticks, so I took that fourth craft stick and I cut it into thirds and then I went ahead and just hot glued the parts that did not reach. After all my painter sticks were glued all together, I flipped it over and gave it a somewhat messy coat of Waverly chalk paint in white. Now I'm not going for full coverage here, I do want some of the natural wood to show through, so I just kind of lightly brushed over it. Now I want the majority of it to be white, but like I said, if some of the wood showed through, that's totally fine. I also made sure to paint in between on those craft sticks as well. Once my white paint was dry, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and a my favorite distressing brush that I do get in a six pack at the Dollar Tree, and I just dry brushed some of the wax on top of my little fence. I just really wanted it to look kind of beat up and rustic, so I just lightly brushed over it. Now I did pay attention to the edges because I wanted to make those defined. Then after I was done distressing it, I took my sand block that I also got from the Dollar Tree and gave it a light sand just to blend in all my wax and the paint. Thank you. 
Once that was done, I put that off to the side and grabbed these three metal flowers. Now these ones are on the stem and these were the only ones I could find on a stem. All the rest of them are gonna be stemless. But the first thing I did was take some purple paint and it is not apple barrel it is actually from a craft store that is out of business but any purple paint will do and then I just painted this orange flower with three coats of that now you do not have to use purple this first project is going to be very colorful and whimsical but you can color you can paint these whatever colors you want like I said in the beginning the possibilities with these are endless so you choose what you like then for the second flower I went ahead and took my pink parfait paint from Apple Barrel and gave the second flower three coats of that. Then for my third flower, I took a light blue paint from, I believe it was apple barrel but I did not realize this was a gloss paint <laughs> you're gonna see it's a little shiny but that's okay I didn't notice it until the very end but it still looked really great so now I have a kind of lavender color a light pink color and a light blue color after all of those were painted, I took a darker color of each one of those colors. So I took a dark blue and a makeup sponge, and I just lightly brushed over my light blue flower. And this is just to add some dimension and to define all the ridges that are in the metal flower. Then I did the same thing with the other two. So I took a darker purple and I dry brushed over the light purple flower and then I took like a hot pink fuchsia color and I dry brushed over the light pink flower. And I really love the little touch that it gave. Now after I was done putting the darker colors on each of the flowers, I went back with the original lighter colors and kind of just brushed over it to kind of lighten up the darker color a little bit. And that way it all blended in. Next, I took my Apple Barrel Spring Green paint and I lightly brushed over all of the leaves on the stems and the stem itself. I just wanted to kind of dull down the shininess and the kind of brighten up the darker colors of the leaves, so I just dry brushed over those. Then once all of my leaves were dry, I took a darker green and I dry brushed over the leaves just like I did with the petals of the flowers. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I found three buttons from that container of buttons from the Dollar Tree. And like I said, this one is gonna be super colorful, but you can do whatever colors you want. But I found three different color buttons and then I hot glued them down to the middle of each one of the flowers. Next, I felt like if they just needed something, so I took that white brush that I had painted the fence with, and I didn't even dip it in any other paint. I just used whatever paint was on the brush, and I just lightly dry brushed over all of the flowers, and I dry brushed over the leaves. I also made sure to dry brush over the buttons too, just to give that a little character as well. Next I grabbed my picket fence again and I arranged my little flowers how I liked them. Then because they were longer than the actual fence, I took some metal wire cutters and I cut the back or the bottom of the stems off. Then to give it a stronger hold, I took a craft stick and cut it in half and then I hot glued a craft stick down on the back of each flower. You're going to see me do this throughout this whole video because that's the best way to glue these down because there is an indent. It kind of um, is a bowl in the middle of the flower. Then once I got all of the craft sticks on, I figured out where I wanted all of my flowers to go. I wanted the middle one to be a little higher and then the two on the sides to be a little lower. So once I figured that all out, I just went ahead and hot glued them all down. I love how this little picket fence flower project came out. I just love the colors on it. It is just so springy or it can transition into summer. And I think this would also be a great gift to give. I just think it's so cheerful and fun. And you're going to catch throughout the video, I, I incorporated a bunch of different styles. So we have some rustic, we have some uh, colorful like this, we have some farmhouse. But I absolutely love this one. But you let me know. What do you think? For my next project, I'm going to start off by using this board that I got at the Dollar Tree around Easter. You can use any of the longer boards, they will definitely work, but I started off by plucking off the little feet on the back, the eyes, the bow, and then I cut off the tag. After that, I flipped it around, and by using my ivory chalk paint from Waverly, I just dry brushed that over the back of this sign. I was not going for full coverage, it was okay if some of the sign showed through, but but I just made sure to have the majority of it covered with the ivory paint. Once that was painted, I put that to aside to let it dry. Then I grabbed three more of these metal flowers. Now I did make sure to grab three different color flowers. I went ahead and took the hooks off and the bells. That way they were ready to paint. Then I went ahead